Moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation is seen in 1.6 million people in the United States, but fewer than one half of 1% will undergo uh, tricuspid repair or replacement. So maybe some new options might be uh, appropriate. We're here to talk at TCT, and this is going to be Jack Online Before Print, uh, experience in a first in man of a novel transcatheter repair system for treating severe tricuspid regurgitation. And I am with the uh, author of that particular presentation, Dr. Joseph rhodes Cabah, who is MD, Quebec Heart and Lung Institute at Laval University. And this particular study was actually done, it's, it's a cooperative study, correct? Mm -hmm. That's exact. And, uh, this uh, study was done in two centers, our center and the St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, and, and uh, Dr. John Webb is uh, also a co-corresponding author of this, uh, of this article. Now, the editorial comment that accompanies this talks about the forgotten valve, and the tricuspid certainly seems to be that. What do we know about the seriousness of the issue, some background, why do we need alternatives? In fact, what, uh, at least what has been reported and the clinical uh, experience seems to say that uh, um, a lot of these patients with uh, significant tricuspid regurgitation, regurgitation are uh, being untreated. Uh, the, there is a surgical indication for treating uh, some of these patients, but especially after left-sided surgery, uh, the risk of these isolated intervention seems to be high in terms of morbidity, in terms of mortality. And uh, I think that is well recognized that uh, uh, this uh, surgical intervention is, is, not very, is not very frequently used. And this is why having transcatheter options in, uh, in these patients may be particularly important. Now, there are Several that have been evaluated, very early preliminary data for all of them. You're taking a slightly different approach. Can you explain what you're doing? In fact, the, uh, the, uh, the device is, is called the Forma device. is a, a device from Edwards Life Sciences. And, and the device consists of a spacer that is a foam-filled polymer balloon that is placed at the level of the regurgitant area of the uh, tricuspid valve in order to provide a coaptation surface for the uh, native tricuspid uh, leaflets. And the device is uh, inserted through the axillary or uh, subclavian vein and uh, attached to the uh, apex of the right ventricle with an anchor system, with an anchoring system. And uh, I, I agree with you, is, um, is a very novel concept in order to try to decrease the degree of regurgitation in, in these patients. Now, what are you reporting here in terms of numbers of patients and what did you find? And this, as I said, will be published in Jack. Yeah, this is a, the very initial experience that uh, was performed, as I said, in, in two Canadian centers under the special access uh, program approved by, by Health Canada. And we are reporting the initial seven patients that were treated with uh, this device. I would say that the, the, the first point is uh, safety. Uh, we were able to implant this device uh, successfully in these uh, seven patients with no major complications. There was a minor bleeding on the access site in uh, one of the patients, some episodes of uh, uh, non-sustained ventricular tachycardia in, in uh, two patients within the hours following the procedure that were controlled afterwards. And um, this was the first point, to, to show really the feasibility and preliminary safety data. Then when we look at, uh, again, uh, very preliminary efficacy uh, data, we saw intraoperatively uh, these procedures are done under general anesthesia and uh, guided by TEE. We saw uh, a significant reduction on, in uh, tricuspid regurgitation in uh, all these patients, sometimes by one degree, sometimes by two degrees in about half of the patients. And at one month follow-up, the, um, the severity of the tricuspid regurgitation was evaluated as moderate uh, in uh, all these patients, was evaluated as severe at the, uh, before uh, doing the procedure. And this translated into, uh, um, into improvements in the clinical status. We had uh, quality, of te quality of life test data in, uh, in many of these patients, uh, showing improvements in, uh, in most of them in the six-minute walk test and uh, also reductions in the peripheral edema. 
Again, very preliminary data. I think that the main objective was to show that this, this concept and this device uh, uh, showing the feasibility of applying this uh, new technique, uh, this catheter technique for tricuspid resuscitation. But it seems at least that the preliminary efficacy data is, uh, goes in the right direction. I mean, they moved from severe to moderate. Were you surprised that there wasn't even a greater response? Mm -hmm. And why not? Do you have any idea? Uh, n no, we don't have the, the, the response for that. We, uh, I, I think that uh, one of the aspects is, is uh, it will be difficult probably without uh, uh, replacing the valve, and, and uh, there is, to the best of my knowledge, no transcatheter valve system uh, designed yet for uh, full valve replacement of the tricuspid valve. It will be difficult to, to reduce uh, tricuspid regurgitation in these patients to none or trace. Uh, we expect that sometimes maybe uh, go to mild. I have to say also that evaluating tricuspid regurgitation after implanting the, the, the um, forma device may be difficult because you have the device in the middle and then sometimes you have uh, multiple small jets is difficult to interpret. Up to now, we were unable to do MRIs. We are in the process of evaluating MRI compatibility. This will be useful to have another tool to, to evaluate the, the severity of uh, tricuspid regurgitation in these patients after the, the intervention. And then uh, maybe some of them uh, were treated, um, I would say, like too late. Maybe the right ventricle was too dilated. Right. And uh, it is not impossible that in the future we would need a larger device. The larger device, the diameter device we have nowadays is 15 millimeters. I mean, one of the things that was noted is that you, while you have a short-term follow-up, there was clinical improvement. Mm -hmm. These patients felt mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. uh, despite the incomplete reduction in TRs. So mm -hmm. that led Dr. Vahanian and Dr. Juilliard in their uh, editorial comment to say, mm -hmm. this is a significant achievement in, in inoperable patients in whom quality of life and reduction of rehospitalization and medical treatment are important. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I think that uh, we realize that maybe with this particular uh, valve and a specific problem, maybe mild, even mild reductions in the uh, severity of the cost of virus might have a clinical impact. But uh, again, we are in a very early stage of right. all this, and uh, uh, now there will be uh, 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 a feasibility trial that will be performed in. Uh, uh, probably in U.S., in uh, in Europe, and um, we will have more data, and we will see uh, we will see if uh, we can reproduce these initial results. Well, congratulations! This is for a first in man study. This is really interesting, and we have this going up online. If you, in fact, if you're looking at this, that means the uh, embargo has passed, which means go online to Jack and read the paper and the accompanying editorial comment. At TCT 2015, I'm Rick McGuire, executive editor.